following is an audio excerpt from Wolves of Croton, The Untold Story of Milo, by John Abdo. Once we reached the procession, I announced our presence. Right away, Aeneep sent one of her four horse chariots, which drove Milo down the main roadway. While passing thousands of elated onlookers, we believed but Asage would be satisfied that our mission had been amply accomplished. But after he took a look at Milo, the Crotonian diplomat proved anything but diplomatic. Now with a more intense look gripping his face, but Asage re-approached me and huffed his hot breath into my ear. You idiot. He looks like a wild animal. Is this how you believe a Crotonian is to represent our state on a world stage? Get him cleaned up. Fast. We rush the chariot to the colonnade and escort Milo into the bathhouse. Servants hurry to prepare him for the celebration. His body was cleansed and his veins painted the color of itcher. His hair is trimmed and braided in tresses, then adorned with colored ribbons woven into his locks. His face is shaved clean, and his finger and toenails clipped and buffed. And as the final touch, olive oil is rubbed across his muscles, which only serves to accentuate his already defined muscularity. When Milo exited the bathhouse, reluctantly, I found myself aligning to Padassett's prior urgency about his appearance. Although his feral presence was beyond impressive, the trimming of Milo's hair alone had beautifully magnified the symmetry of his physique, making him appear larger and more muscular. My attention was first drawn to Milo's facial and neck structures, which were normally hidden by his long hair. I also noticed his forehead was thickly calloused from butting heads with bulls. His cheekbones and mandibular structures, meanwhile, were plumped with bulky moss setters developed from biting through thick animal hides, chewing raw flesh, and gnawing sinew off bones. Milo's neck stood supported by thick sternomascoid pillars that rotated his head, producing a kinetic force similar to the dynamic tensions created when loading projectiles onto a ballistas. And his trapezia stood highly erected, crowning his back like the twin peaks of a mountain massif. His latissimus dorsi muscles spread across his upper back like he was wearing the shell of a giant loggerhead. Triangulated deltoids beautifully mounted at top veiny biceps and striated triceps, straddled the anterior and lateral axes of his physique, and his pectorals crowned his chest like an emblazoned Spartan gear ass. In the meantime, if one's eyes were only fixed on Milo's legs, hips, and buttocks, one would have difficulty believing those anatomical sections belonged to a human being, as the muscular anatomy in Milo's lower body resembled that of a centaur. As for the core of Milo's physique, his rectus abdominis and oblique sectors, they were sublimely tapered, accentuated with rippling blocks of intercostal and serratus muscles. Now that Milo at last appeared presentable, but Asids reluctantly conceded, allowing Croton's chief wrestling representative to join in the procession. If you are enjoying this content, please like, follow, share, and subscribe, and I'll continue to bring you more fascinating information on Milo or Croton and other great mythological and mortal figures from antiquity. I'm John Abdo, thanking you for watching. Stay strong and healthy, and perhaps one day, thousands of years from now, people then will be remembering your name as well.